Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about firewall appliances. In my opinion, there are two big uh, packages that do a very great, very good job. Uh, that's on the one side PFSense and on the other side OpenSense. I will do comparison in depth on those packages soon. This is more of an introduction video of what can you expect from installing those. In a previous video I talked about endpoint protection, so that's really like really the device that you're working on protected. But if you are inside a home network with a couple of computers and smartphones and laptops and iPads and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you have it centralized, the security, and you want to make sure that you have a great firewall running for you. Uh, and you don't have to make sure that on every device there's a firewall running because you also need to maintain it, need to be updated, stuff like that. Make sure it's centralized and it's very powerful. PFSense is acquired by NetGate a couple of years ago, so they also have certain products here. Let me go over them very quickly. You can have them, let's see, where are the products? Software appliances. Yes, here. So you have NetGate uh, routers, switches uh, that come with PFSense preloaded. You don't really need to uh, worry about setting it up. But it all costs money. It's more for businesses that can't be bothered, that m want to make sure that they have a small, very smart appliance that take care of their uh, internet traffic, uh, DHCP, IDS, IPS. I will explain those very soon. So if you're a business and you want to have PFSense, just go buy yourself an appliance of Netgear. Uh, but if you're like me, uh, IT uh, IT guy that has a computer laying around that's five to seven years old and uh, you're not really doing much with it no more, you can dedicatedly run PFSense on it. Well, what does it have to offer? You can set up a VPN server, which is very nice if you want to connect several locations with each other. You can connect to your brother, your sister, you can connect to your parents if you want to send some videos. You can all do it on your own network and uh, it, you, you won't have to use Facebook, Google or any other platform. You do it on your own terms. So that's great. You can set up a VPN. Load balancing for, um, let's say for instance you have a, a server connected to the network, an F FTP server or web server, who knows why, who, who still does that in 2020, but you could. Uh, if there's a lot of traffic uh, directed to that web server, you can load balance it. Maybe you have two servers or multiple servers doing the same thing. You can have some load balancing on the router. What a great feature. Um, of course, firewall is very important. Firewall, we all know the concept of firewall. What comes in, what cannot uh, come in, uh, what port is blocked, what port is open. You know, you can set it all up. It's a router as well. It's your, it's your basically where the internet comes in and uh, let's say dirty internet comes in and filtered internet uh, um, at the end of PFSense comes out and is distributed all over the clients in your network. DNS, the name main name service. You can use the one from your ISP or you can use the one from Google. Maybe you use the one from Cloudflare, but you can set it up where all your DNS requests will be sent to. DHCP server. You can set up several IP ranges for your network. Uh, you can use multiple VLANs if you want, like a VLAN for your servers, a VLAN for your clients. Um, you can set it all up. IDS, intrusion detection system. So your router detects if you're under attack and what kind of attack. It detects it and it will let you know. IPS, prevention system, intrusion prevention system. So it will prevent you from uh, getting intruders into your network, onto your clients. And this is um, a very, very neat feature. But don't think for a second you can set it up and don't look back at it. Because when I first set it up, I couldn't even access Google no more after the second request because somehow it triggered a certain pattern and the IDS thought we were under attack. So you have to suppress certain things and you have to whitelist certain things, what you're sure of that it's not an attack. It will not run out of the box. <laughs> That's a disclaimer. But 
when you do set it up, it's, it's a great feature. And you will see that you're under constant attack from uh, scripts, from crawlers on the internet, whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a great tool. Moving on. Content filter. Well, that's pretty obvious, right? I mean, you shouldn't uh, search for hacking tools. You shouldn't search for WAP-related stuff. You know, um, you shouldn't do that, uh, especially on a, a corporate network. If you have children and you don't want to expose them to the to the filthy dirt that's out there on the internet, just uh, make sure that you uh, set this content filter in there and also make sure that you set this content filter directly to the IP addresses of the clients mm -hmm. of the devices that your children use, for instance. Here you have all the firewall and router capabilities that PFSense has to offer quite a lot it's very nice. VLAN support is very nice to uh, separate certain IP uh, ranges. You have an IP range for servers, you have an IP range for your own devices, you have an IP range for your wife, you have an IP range for your kids. You can all set it up. Very good. GUIP blocking. Uh, you, can, you can block whole continents. So you can block Asia, you can block Africa, you can block Europe whatever you want you can block it based on GUIP tables could be useful you know just block uh, Ukraine <laughs> block North Korea block Russia and you're good to go no disrespect but you know that's where the hackers are from uh, DHCP server already talked about that uh, VPN IPsec open VPN intrusion prevention system on layer 7 deep packet inspection how great is that to have that on your own router good stuff enterprise reliability user authentication proxy and content filtering administration anyway i'm not going to go into all the details but you can see how much options you have when it comes to pfsense this is a free and open source firewall for home users People that run a business have to pay some extra, but they will also get some extra features which are very helpful. It used to be an open source project, now it's being acquired by NetGate. So this is PFSense. This is a package I have uh, over more than eight years experience with. I didn't set it up myself. I didn't administrate it myself. That's all being done for me by a very friendly guy that I know personally. And he's into networking and um, you know he's uh, he had more than 10 years experience with this package and uh, yeah he showed me all the great features that it has to offer and in the best of my ability I will explain it to you what it is that I like so much about PFSense in upcoming videos enough about PFSense let move let me move over to OpenSense OpenSense is almost the same as PFSense, it just has a different layout and it also has some of the same features that you find on PFSense. So it has a firewall, if you have multiple ISPs, internet service providers set up, you can have it here, you can set it up there with load balancing and failover support, you can set up VPN, uh, you can set up as they when. Um, it also has an IDS and IP, IPS two-factor authentication for clients on, on, on the network if you want. You can uh, routing protocols, you can set it up, the, the various routing protocols. I'm not a network guy, so I will not uh, talk too much about this. Web filtering about the content, what's for your eyes and what's not for your eyes based on DNS blacklisting, um, URL blacklisting, and also pushing it to certain IP ranges, yes or no. Um, it has a different interface than uh, PFSense, which I will show you in an upcoming video. It has a lot of documentation out there and has a big community. Web application filters. Um, you know, this could be also uh, very uh, helpful if you uh, do a lot of uh, business on the web. Um, again, I will show you more about it. Lines of code. Plugins, releases, major releases, testimonials. The best day to migrate to OpenSense was five years ago. The second best is today. <laughs> Again, we're going to talk about firewalls in the upcoming series. And this will take some time. What I'm going to do is I will install these packages inside a virtual box. I will also install a web server 
um, and I will show you what these packages can do, how they look like, what the options are. I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but this is a disclaimer, I'm not a network guy. So I can tell you in general what it is that these packages do and what they have to offer for you. And I can tell you from my own experience um, that they're great. But if you're not a networking guy, um, you can, again, if you have an old computer, just set it up on an old computer. Just burn an ISO file, which I will show you. Let's see. Products, appliances, where is it? NetGate. PFSense, become a customer, join the program, okay. Where is it? Get PFSense now. Get a NetGear appliance, get, okay. Can we still get the ISO file? Get PFSense now. Okay, technical. Where can we download the damn thing? Let me have a look, real quick, real quick. Products, applications, customer support, resources, company, products, platform, overview, PFSense software. Get PFSense now. I have to choose already subscription on the desktop. Yes, this should be the one. Anyway. Just do a quick Google search. PFSense download ISO 64 bit. And I've been there. See, it's still possible. So you select your architecture 64 bit. If you uh, want to install it on a USB stick or uh, you want to burn it onto a CD. So you can use it uh, for installing a dedicated machine. It's all in here. Um, I suggest you do that. You have an old computer or you're very interested in firewalls. You want to go into the world of networking or you want to know more about firewalls. Buy yourself an old computer. It, has, it can be for $50 or 50 euros. You buy yourself an old computer, just make sure that it has the required, uh, the hardware requirements that PFSense needs. Burn it onto a CD, uh, load it up there. Make sure you have two network interface cards, one for the network interface card that goes from the modem uh, to uh, network interface card one. And network interface card 2 is the one that you connect to the rest of your network. So it's really like what I said, dirty internet is being filtered by PFSense and comes out as kind of clean on the other side. So make sure that you have those hardware requirements set up. Have a server with two network interface cards. Download this program for free. And if you want to see what it does, just do like me. You install a virtual box here. Um, you set it up uh, with OpenBSD. So let's say for instance new. Uh, we call this PFSense. It's Linux. No, it's BSD. Free BSD, 64-bit, next. And you do the rest. And I will show you in the next video how I set it up. You can also do this. This is free. This program here, Virtual Virtual Box Manager from Oracle, is free. And the ISO is free. So you can already check out what the software can do um, if you're really interested. Well, I've been rambling on for way too long now. So I will close this video. Um, I just want to let you guys know that in the future I will do some detailed videos about these great software packages that you see here in front of you, OpenSense and PFSense. I'm very passionate about it, but these uh, videos take a lot of uh, preparation, which I will do because I want to know, I want to let you guys know that uh, these packages are very useful if you want to secure your home network against threats from the internet. So thanks for watching and we hope to see you guys in the next video.